Oh, hi there. Didn't know you were there. I'm just kidding. Hey, a couple weeks ago, I uh, posted a video on wire ampacity, and I got a ton of engagement on it. Except it was not the kind of engagement I wanted to get. <laughs> this week, I'm going to be discussing why some of you are upset, and make sure you stick around to the end of the video, because i got some great stuff to talk about, and you're not going to want to miss it. Let's get going. So what did have everybody's knickers in a knot? Well, it seems like when I did the last week's video, when I did a wire opacity and I discussed insulation ratings and temperature ratings and insulation, I may have neglected to discuss the temperature limitations of the conductors when terminating to different pieces of equipment. Now you might think, I thought you taught this stuff. So how can you go ahead and forget something as important as that? Here's the deal. I don't want to make these videos super long. When I was doing the code videos, I noticed that they're longer than my typical videos by sometimes like 10 minutes. So what I thought I would do is just kind of break it up in little chunks. So this was coming next, this temperature limitations for conductors. I promise it was coming next, but perhaps I should have mentioned that at the end of the last video. So here's the thing, stick around for the end of this video and I'll let you know what's coming up. So if I forgot something, watch to the end and maybe you'll catch me on it, maybe you won't, and will send me to the stakes. Okay, so let's talk about temperature limitations for conductors. It's in the code. So I'm gonna look at this as a code rule that we're dealing with out of the CEC, the Canadian Electrical Code. I understand that some of you are Americans and you are working out of the National Electrical Code. So again, if you want, all you people who are in the NEC, make sure you go down below here and in the comments, mention where you find these rules for in the NEC. Now I know that it doesn't automatically always line up and it's not a one for one, but I do know that there are some rules out there in the NEC that do line up, and I believe that this is one of them. So here we go. It says here, where equipment is marked with the maximum conductor temperature limitation, termination temperature, sorry, the minimum size of the conductor used shall be based on the allowable opacity in the temperature columns in tables 1, 2, 3, or 4, with all relevant correction factors being applied as required by rule 4-004 corresponding to the maximum termination temperature marked on the equipment. That is the one thing I didn't mention. So we're going to work it off of those tables, the columns, the temperature columns. Now remember, we discussed in the last video, and there's going to be a link up top here. So if you're missing this, you don't know what I'm talking about. Up there, you'll see a little I. Click on that, and you should be able to watch the last video, or at least see where it is. So I talked about how the insulation had temperature ratings, and you always had to go with the lowest common denominator. So what this rule tells us, though, is that on top of that, we have to consider the equipment that we are hooking up to. And this is here in, in two, subrule two. For the purpose of subrule one, and except as provided for by other rules of this code, where the maximum conductor temp termination temperature for equipment is not marked, the maximum conductor temperature, sorry, termination temperature shall be considered to be 60 degrees for equipment rated at not more than 100 amps, or marked for use with number one, AWG or smaller conductors, and 75 degrees C for equipment rated more than 100 amps, marked for use with conductors larger than number one. So there you go. We If we don't know what the equipment is, and we know that it's rated, at least we can figure out, you better know what the opacity is of the, that equipment. If it's below 100 amps or not more than 100 amps, so up to and including 100 amps, you treat it like it's 60 degrees Celsius. If it's exceeding 100 amps, then you treat it like it's 75 degrees. So example number one, three conductor number six, NMD90, is installed in a 60 amp disconnect and the temperature rating is unknown. What is the opacity of the conductor? So what do we do? Let's go over to here and take a look at our table two. So this is three conductor number six installed in a 60 amp disconnect. So number six, R90 would be 75 amps. But because this is a 60 amp disconnect and we don't know what the temperature rating is of it, we're actually going to have to base it as it is 60 degrees C because it is below 100 amps or 100 amps and below. So it's 55 amps is the opacity of the conductor. Again, we're not using any of these columns. We have to use the 60 degree column and that's where we get our 55 from or 55. What's the correct size of NMD used 
insulated three conductor copper cable to feed out 7.2 kilowatt 240 volt dryer. Let's look at our steps here. Step one, we're going to take the power and divide it by the voltage so we get 30 amps. Step two, the temperature is unknown and the current is below 100 amps. Step three, we're going to use the 60 degree column. So we're going to the 60 degree column for 30 amps. Whoop. And it's going to be number 10. And there it is, step four, number 10. So that's it. There's not a lot to it. It kind of just builds on what we talked about in the last video on wire ampacity. So that's kind of where we're leaving it at that. So don't neglect the fact that it's hooked up to a piece of equipment and that equipment itself has temperature ratings. Okay, I promised you at the end of here that I would offer you something good. I have some interactive workbooks you might want to go check out. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to them below in the description. And if you can, and if you get value out of these videos, I've got a Patreon page going. I'd love to keep these things moving on and keep these things rolling. If you can help out in any way at Patreon, you get some special perks. You get access to the, uh, the textbooks, actually, the workbooks, and they're interactive. You want to check them out, and I'll talk about them later on. If you haven't joined the newsletter yet, make sure you hit that link below as well. Have a fantastic week. We will see you all on the next week. And as I always like to say, in the words of Ron Burgundy, stay classy. Great story. Compelling and rich. <laughs>